Hello? We're going to be applying all those exponent laws we looked at so far, basically to try and solve this monstrosity here. It looks pretty big, looks pretty ugly, but it's still just applying those laws we did very methodically, and we'll get there. Although there's one thing I want to start off with, some weird thing over here, about 7 to the 0. We never actually talked about that case. Something to the power of 0. And I mean, it's a logical place to start, because 7 also to see only 7 in the entire equation. What do we do with it? Well, little mini lesson right here first. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 7 to the power of 0 is 1. x to the power of 0 is 1. If I'd put brackets around this entire thing and put it to the power of 0, you could just say it's equal to 1 and go home and call it a day. It's done. But I'm not that nice, so we're going to have to actually solve this. Let's see what we got. Again, right away, at least I can say this is 1. The whole thing is equal to 1, so it's going to disappear, because all of this times 1 is still itself. So, we've got to remember, we can only combine those things that have like bases. So the x's can only combine with the x's, 3's can only combine with the 3's, y's can only combine with the y's. Okay, let's do it methodically then. Let's start focusing on one thing at a time. x. So let's start with the x. We know it's to the power of 3. Well, this, since they're on the same line, they're multiplying, so we're going to be adding those exponents, but this x is also to an exponent itself. So we're going to be adding and since this is minus 2 to the power of 6, remember when you have exponent to the power of exponent, they multiply. So we're actually adding minus 2, which is being multiplied by 6. But we also have a 3 down here. Or, sorry, an x to the minus 2 down here. Okay, well this is dividing, so we'd normally subtract. But we're subtracting minus 2, which is itself raised to the power of 3. So we're subtracting minus 2, which is being multiplied by 3. Same kind of a reasoning we used up here. It's raised to an exponent, so we're going to have to actually multiply those. We could do it step by step if we wanted to. In fact, I might show that beside, but you could multiply this 3 in to all of these terms, or I'm going to try and do it all in one step. So, this would be our x term right here. Then if we looked at our y term, might run out of room a bit, y to the minus 4. And then, where else do we have y's? Ah, only there. So again, it's dividing our term, so we'd be subtracting. And then again, we have 7 plus b to the 3. So it's subtracting 7, and I'm going to actually do two brackets, because 7 plus b all has to be multiplied by 3. And then we're subtracting it from there. And finally, we can look at the 3's. We've got 3a. Again, these a's, these b's I've added in this time, remember, it doesn't matter. It's just the same rules as if these were numbers. We're just going to still have a and b in in the end. So 3 to the a. And then we have two 3's down here. 3 to the minus 4, all raised to an exponent. But what about this 3 right here? 3 to the nothing. We haven't seen that case either. The only trick to remember is 3 to the nothing is the same as 3 to the 1. So we can think if we want that there's exponent 1 here. Because anything to the power of 1 is just itself. So we have 3 and then we're minusing 4, but that 4 is to the power of 3 itself. So minus, minus 4 times 3. And then also minus 1, which is also times 3. That's what we're ending up with. I'm doing it all in one line. I'm all starting from the top and applying the exponent laws. In a second, I'll show you how to solve it if we went through methodically. This, I like this way because it's nice and quick and clean all in one line. Probably looks awful, but we'll get there. So what do we got? x. Well, x to the 3, so 3 plus minus 12, so minus 9, and then minus minus 6. So plus 6 should give us to the minus 3. Maybe a quick double check. Minus 12, plus 6, 9, minus 3. Then y. We got minus 4. And so this part right here we can think is minus 21. Actually, you know what? 
I'm going to draw this out a little. I'm still going to show a few more steps. As much as this is x to the minus 3, I'm going to do it in two steps rather than just trying to draw it out one. I don't want anyone getting lost. So we got 3 minus 12 plus 6. This becomes 12, this becomes 6, the minuses cancel, and then this minus and the plus become a minus. Same thing with y. We got minus 4, and then 3 times this, so we're going to have minus 21. I'm leaving the bracket because I'm going to have to multiply this minus into everything after. Plus 3b. So, showing a few extra steps is probably a good idea. And 3, the same thing here. A, and then a minus and a minus becomes a plus, so plus 12, and minus 3. Now, we can clean it up to the final step. So we got, again, this became minus 3 as we said before. This is minus 4, minus 25. So well, minus 21, sorry, so minus 25. And then this minus and a plus becomes a minus, 3b. And then 3, the a can't combine with the 12 or the 3, so it becomes plus 9. So this would be the final solution, doing it this way. Again, just remember things like b's, which was again poorly drawn. B's and A's can't be combined with numbers. If I knew what B and A was, I'd combine it. But I just use the exponent laws here. What if I did this a little more methodically? What if I went line by line, assuming I actually have the room to do so? Well, I start with this, and maybe I just want to apply the rules line by line. I could also say this is the same as x to the 3, y to the minus 4, 3a, x, that becomes to the minus 2 times 6, and 7 to the 0 just becomes 1. Again, you might want to solve it either way. You're going to see what you're the most comfortable with. Now, in this case, I'm multiplying this exponent in. So I get 3 to the minus 4 times 3, x to the minus 2 times 3, y to the 7 plus b all times 3, and 3 to the 1 times 3. And now, I'm going to also combine these two. When I multiply them, remember, this is minus 12. Multiplying them on the top means you add them. So I get x to the 3 minus 12 on the top. And y to the minus 4 is still there. 3 to the a is still there. The 1 just disappears. This is 3 to the minus 12. This is x to the minus 6. This is y to the 21 plus 3b. And if I wanted to, I can think this is 3 to 3, this is 3 to the minus 12. Since they're multiplying, I'd add 3. Then we'll continue it over here. I'm going to finish it off right here. We have, just going to kind of rewrite it where we're at. x to the minus 9, y to the minus 4, 3 to the a, 3 to the minus 9, x to the minus 6, and y to the 21 plus 3b. Finally, in the end, since these are dividing, I subtract this by these. So x to the minus 9 minus minus 6, y to the minus 4 minus 21 plus 3b, and 3 to the a minus minus 9. Or in other words, x to the minus 3, y to the minus 21, minus 3b, 3a plus 9, which hopefully matches what I got there, as it must. So, two different ways of solving it, whichever you're the most comfortable with. As always, you should try both, see which one you like, see which one is more natural for you, and then stick with that. Oh, just noticed I actually wrote 21 instead of 25. We had minus 4, minus 21, so this should be a minus 25. As I said, these are better match. If they don't, 
you've done something wrong. And in my case, I had done something wrong. Simply forgot to add in the minus 4. So they do match, and I had just forgotten to check closely, apparently. Thank you.